see here. Do we have audio? We've got some audio here. Yes, indeed. Let's get a little bit of background. Do we have that? I think we do. Let's check it out. Yeah. All right. Try to get this thing crack like it. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I don't know how we do. Independent male. Struggle streaming on y'all this fine night. How y'all be? Y'all get them taxes did. That's the real question. If you didn't, you might be struggling with me. Every night we're gonna do this, y'all. Every night you struggling, every night you struggling, every night we struggling, struggling, strict struggling. Turn on the mic, I'm struggling. Turn on the cam, I'm struggling. Every stream, I'm struggling, struggling, strict struggling. Streaming is hard. Streaming is hard. Man, it's real hard. Man, this shit is real hard. Put that on God. About to fall apart. I need a real job, man. I need a real job. Every night I'm struggling. Every night stream struggling. Every night I'm struggling, struggling, just to struggling. Turn on my mic, I'm struggling. Turn on the cam, I'm struggling. Every night stream struggling, struggling, just to struggling. Ha <laughs> Come on, y'all. Just getting y'all crunk. For the hump day. We done made it to hump day, y'all. We halfway through. Hope you got the taxes did. You know what I'm saying? Let me know. Let me know if you hollering, if you tuning in from the East Coast, if you're an East Coast night owl, if you're a West Coast, they're kicking it. Let me know. And also, let me know how you're watching this stream because it's a YouTube vertical stream. I was under the assumption that it was only going to pop up in the shorts feed but I think it may pop up in the regular live feed as well. And the only reason I'm asking is because of my last live, uh, my man Pete was in the chat and he was like, hey, yo, my man, what's wrong with your camera? And I'm up here, I'm looking, I'm looking at my screen. I'm like, it looked like it's focused. I'm like, I don't know what he's talking about. And it took me a few minutes. I'm like, oh, he may be watching on the computer. So I'm curious, um, let me know um, in the chat if you are watching on the computer or if you're watching on the phone. But I really wanna know where you're watching from. If you up late on the East Coast like me, I'm in an A, um, or if you're in the West Coast where it's not that late and you just up hitchhiking, you know, doing a little virtual hitchhiking, got the thumb going up and down. So I hope you're going my way for a little bit. And speaking of my way, let me let you know what tonight's show is about. So you can know if you wanna go my way or not, all right? So, you see, I got my scoop hat on. I got my Scooby-Doo Mystery Machine shirt on because why? We gonna dive. We gonna dive into the Diddy Saga, okay? We gonna do two updates on two small stories before that, but we gonna dive into the Diddy Saga because Lil Rod has gone back and filed new court documents. And I'm talking new court documents as in filed for 9-24, April 9th, 24th, like a week ago. Okay, updating his last um, filing. And pretty much, this is like a 30 minute clip. I watched five minutes of it and I knew I was gonna look, have to do it for the show because when and within five minutes, he's like, he's got photos. He's willing to testify because of course everybody was calling him out when you know his report first came out and you know like what is his motives? You know what I mean? He, he capping, blah, blah, blah. He like, okay, I'm capping, I'll testify. Oh, and I got tapes. We got to hear about the tapes. Who's on the tapes? It's a the hints and a thumbnail if you happen to see this on the computer. So anyway, before we get to that, um, this whole show is going to be an apology show. I got three topics I got to issue apology on. So you know the first one. The first one was the little ride because I was a little skeptical myself. That's why I say when I say some people, some people was me. Okay? I mean, I'll admit it. So apology to him. Um, then I'm going to issue an apology to our government, all right? And I'll tell you why, it's not gonna be long. Usually I do that type of stuff during the daytime. I don't like to get into that at night. You know what, I think this, um, I don't want this pinned up on the screen like that. Hold on for a second, you guys, I gotta get rid of this. And while I get rid of this, um, thank you guys for being in here, man. And, and uh, like I was, what I, and all I unpinned was 
saying if you don't mind in the chat, let me know if you're on the east or the west coast. Because I just want to know if, if you guys are people that are up late or if your post is just up, you know what I'm saying, on the west coast. And I really want to know if you're watching on the phone or if you're watching on the computer. But anyway, so a pod, it's a quick apology to, to, the, to the government. Um, usually I do that stuff on the, in the daytime on my little daytime shorts or whatever governmental type stuff nighttime We want to keep it light talk about social issues. Um, and then I got I hate to issue this apology but I got to issue apology to the hive Let me give me a sip to the beehive to the queen bee to Beyonce Got to issue a, a apology to her then I'm gonna issue the apology to the ride We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get into a deep dive into that. So Mm. Since I'm not struggling anymore and nothing hung up yet, maybe we'll switch this out. But we go to the to the first story here. You know, switch out this uh I'm not struggling music right now. See if we can regulate a little bit. Um, all right. <clears throat> all right. So I said issuing the first apology to our I'm gonna say fire the US government. And the reason I mentioned the apology, because I'm I'm critical on both sides all day, every day. The left, the right, you know what I mean? Like right now we got a choice in November between an alleged criminal or the crypt keeper. Those are our two choices. Maybe fans of one or the other one. It's what it is for me for November. But that being said. I know everybody's trying to bring Trump up on trial for different things. Probably should be the case from fraud to alleged election interference, hush money stuff, blah, blah, blah. Jim Jordan will call you in for some kind of con congressional hearing in a minute, whether it's valid or not. I get it. Our government can be a fiasco. But what is not is what's going on in Georgia. The Georgia parliament is like, oh, we'll show you what dysfunction looks like. And when I say Georgia, I'm talking about the country of Georgia, of Georgia, not uh, not GA where I am, even though we got our own stuff going on with uh, funny, the fatty Pat Willis. I'm sure she'll have something else coming up soon, too, as far as doing something. Um, she got some she got some money that needs to be accounted for. But anyway, let's check out what's going on up here in, uh, in, in Jordan, Jordan, the country at their parliament. Let's check that out right quick. Shemdek, who's the Atiyan Salem Sachi Heba? Kalbaton Matakom, Kalbaton Matakom, Kitra, who's the Atiyan Salem Tantak of Shibitoda, Kaimura, Am Sakit Shib, Tina Bukuchawa Shakit Hotan. Okay. I'm going to run that back right quick. Because, of course, I don't know what the issue is. I can't speak any of that. And I couldn't even really see the subtitles at the bottom. But what I do know is the speaker at the time was conducting himself accordingly. And uh, my man behind him was paying attention at first. And then he, 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 he ducks the head down to look at something. I don't know what he's looking at, but that's when my man come out. And he, I mean, he clocked your boy in the temple spot all right all right let's check it out just just making sure y'all know what to look at this time because I, I i didn't expect it when i saw it at first here we go yeah, Yeah, rainbow stripes parliament sign. I mean, I wonder what happened after that. You know what I'm saying? Like, what was everybody in the room doing after whoever came and sucker punched your boy? What happened after that? <laughs> oh, a melee. Melee happened after that. Yeah, yeah. This is governmental right here. This is governmental right here. Look at him, yo. You want? Some, he went, yo. He went Dylan. You want some more of this hot fire? I'll translate for y'all. I'll translate for y'all. You want more? You want some more of this hot fire? Let's check it out. Okay, okay. The whole dog, dog. Who, 
whoever was in the room was like, y'all not gonna just come in here and swing on my mans like that. Dog. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dog, you heard it. Yo, elbows and fisticuffs. Elbows and fisticuffs. That's all you getting right now. That's all you getting right now. So for that reason right there, I'm issuing a thousand apologies for all, a lot of the criticisms I've issued to our five Democrats and Republicans in the U.S. government because they straight through in bowls only. Like we might have people climb all over the Capitol every once in a while. I mean, once, I mean, you know, January 6th, but uh, just straight through it, throw them bowls. Yo, I expect to see that. Didn't expect to see that. Now, when I originally saw that, it was um, uh, it was actually a, a full clip fr from this weekend where they were talking about kind of like mayhem, you know, all over the globe. And I had to show, or I'm saying had to, I could only show that one and not the stuff that went down in Australia, man. I don't know if any of y'all um, know what happened in Australia. Um, <laughs> what up, Ethan? Oh, um, I don't know if uh, y'all saw what happened in Australia, but like separate people went on like these different I'm going to say shanking sprees because, you know, YouTube is funny about stuff you can say. So I'm like, you know, we're going to say deletions and stuff like that, which is the reason why I couldn't show any of that footage. And um, of course, none of it was was funny, but it was it was crazy how I actually saw one of them um, when it got my attention. And that the story of that is is somewhat funny. Um when I have my TV on in the bedroom, most of the time I'm not looking at it. I'll just have it on and the volume won't even won't be on or anything. And I was messing in my phone, probably trying to make some thumbnails or something. And I looked up and the screen had a, a rabbi or a priest or whatever, you know, behind a pulpit, you know, giving his, his message. And the Chiron or the graphics at the bottom, all it said was rabbi or priest or whatever. And I guess I looked up before the graphic change to what happened to him but i looked up and i'm like i see this guy preaching and then the dude just runs up and you just see this and i don't know if it was like in the face or neck area or whatever but i'm like bruh is this what i'm watching on on like the news and it was just like then somebody else ran through the mall and he was just like you know like getting his shiv on all over the place that was crazy but this was the lighter of the craziness that was going on outside the states, um, so we 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 went with the uh, with the Georgia Parliament fisticuffs. Now, off to apology numero due. We are going to apologize, like I said, to somebody I don't really like to apologize to because I am not a part of the hive, and I know I may lose some people for saying that. But I think Beyonce's fine as a woman. I just don't understand how she has been dubbed the voice of our generation for our community. But whatever. Anyway. But I will have to issue an apology, and it is for um, Country Carter. Am I issuing an apology because I've gone and I've listened to Country Carter and I've been converted to a Beehive Country Carter fanatic? No, no, I have not. That is not why I'm apologizing. I'm apologizing because I preemptively rolled my eyes when I saw Country Carter be released and I was like, oh man, here we go. Now we're gonna have to endure charges of racism when the Country Music Awards come out if she doesn't get nominated and or win. Similar to Nas X, remember that was a thing that, that happened to him. Country Road blew up, got on the country charts. There was a little turmoil about it, you know what I mean? And then Garth Brooks came to his defense, made the remix, blew it up even further. History, history, history from there all right so i thought the same thing was gonna happen with this uh with the with the country carter but i was wrong and that's why i'm issuing the apology because we did not have to wait for the country music awards to come out for charges of racism we actually get to see it in real time before the country music awards somebody at indiana state university decided to offer it up with um Without even being asked. And really, to be honest, I think she got triggered by something probably when she went out, I think at a frat party or something like that. 
What is this? This is a YouTube virtual live stream. So YouTube um, has been encouraging people to use their virtual, I mean, I'm sorry, their uh, vertical live stream platform so that people that are um, in YouTube shorts, you know, thumbing through shorts, looking for stuff to look at in the shorts, they may pop into a live stream. So that is the, uh, the whole camera deal. Um, but if you mean, and I'm, I'm talking to overflow, so what's up overflow. And if you meant specifically what kind of camera is a Canon SL3, but I think you mean why, why the screens up and down like that. Um, so anyway, yeah. So let's get on over here to, uh, Indiana, Indiana state university right quick. Um, and see what this is about. Let's see what this is about here. And why is this on my screen where I can't see? All right. Wow, I cannot get this off my screen. So I'm gonna skip this because I cannot read it. And we're just gonna go straight to what the, because anyway, all the um, all the article was gonna talk about, of course, is that the students on the campus have protested um, off of this comment that I'm gonna play in a little bit that a, a fellow student made. And then like the president came out and of course was like, this doesn't represent, you know, our values or whatever at Indiana State University. So. All right, so let's get to the actual clip of what it is that um, Miss Lady had to say here. I hear black. You're not country. Yeah. I, I don't care. Like, it, and I wish I meant that in the nicest way. But like... Sounded nice. Babe, I know you were raised in the country or you're grandparents were, I guess, your great granny and grandpas, but they was picking, okay? They wasn't planting. Just keep that in mind. They wasn't making money. They was getting sold for money. You ain't country. Why are you wearing boots and a motherfucking jeans and a cut off to a frat party? Somebody's upset. And the thing is, the last part of this is, is to me the telling part of what she's actually, she's agitated about. So she seems to be agitated about two things. One, seems she seems to be agitated about appropriation. This is the US. This is America. All of us are appropriated. All of us are appropriated. Get over that. Okay. You, you don't own cut off jeans and boots, but okay. You're, you're upset about that. But then the part where she says something about wearing something to a frat party, and then she's got her, like she's got her little, her lips gnarled up or whatever. That's where she's really in a tissy. So it, it leads me to believe that I'm assuming that some black girl showed up at a frat party dressed in some, um, basically some cowboy Carter guard. Keep that in mind. They wasn't making money. Oh yeah. And she also wanted to make sure that we knew that we were not on team ownership. We were on team property. Got it. And see, and, and before I get back to the parts of where she looked like she was triggered, I'm actually, I'm actually not upset about this. Who should be upset are actually true country folks, true regular Southerners, because what this 20 something year old at Indiana State Con uh, College uh, University has done, she has summed up your entire lifestyle to slavery or I'm sorry, slavery ownership, because she made sure she knew she established who was picking and who wasn't and who was making money and who was being sold for money. And then that also messes with the whole heritage argument when people have these discussions about flags and statues, because she summed it up that it's all about slavery. Country identity is all about slavery. Southern identity is all about slavery. According to this 20 year old girl at Indiana university. 
So if I was a southerner or a country person, I, I would be the one that was probably more upset about this. Or your grandparents were, I guess. Your great granny and grandpas. But they was picking, okay? They wasn't planting. One plant. Keep that in mind. Okay, they I got it. It's in mind. I was getting sold for money. You ain't country. Not country. Why are you wearing boots and a motherfucking jeans and a cut off to a frat party? Huh? And, and I'm going to get off of this, but the only other question I had, because obviously she was in a, she's in a tissy about whoever showed up at this frat party. Why you didn't ask her? Hmm? It looked like you had the opportunity that you could have asked her why she was wearing more fucking jeans and f -f 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 the fat party. You could have asked her. I know why you didn't ask her. <laughs> all right, done with that. Now, drum roll, please. We are off to the main event party, people. The story of the night. My man Lil Rod said he got some turps. We're going to see what he said he got on the tapes because this dang on interview thing is like 30 minutes and I only watch five minutes of it. So I'm curious to see. I'm curious to see what he's going to what all is on it, because I was working at the time and I didn't have time to look at all of it. So I hope it's as juicy as I think it is. But the first four or five minutes look like it. So I'm pretty sure it is. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here we go. Former music producer for Sean Diddy Combs worked on his latest album with him, suing him for sex trafficking and sexual assault and harassment. Well, they filed new court documents and included in those documents was an unsworn declaration from Jones himself detailing more things he saw, heard, experienced during his time working and basically living with Combs. And in this 18 page declaration, it starts with a promise that he's telling the truth, quote, I have personal knowledge of the facts set forth herein, which I know to be true and correct. And if called upon to testify as a witness, I could and would completely testify there too. Mm. Now he's declaring all of this under threat of perjury. So if he's lying, that's a big deal. Now, if you ask me, I think one of the reasons Jones is doing this is to bolster his credibility because it's come under attack in the public. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned, some of the people that he mentioned in his lawsuit have fired back against those allegations. Opposing counsel questioned his narratives and motives. So this is an opportunity for him to tell the court, look, I have the receipts. I can back up what I'm saying. I will testify about this. So there are a lot of details that he provides, including background and how he got linked up with and started working for Diddy. And we already covered a lot of that mm -hmm. in his complaint on previous sidebars. But according to Jones, he has hundreds of hours of video of Combs in his inner circle. Wait a minute, what? Not, not a tape, he said hundreds. He says that Combs required him to film constantly because he did not like to repeat himself. He said, quote, I quickly learned that from observing him lose his temper with his staff and family if they failed to remember something he said a day or two prior. Jones lists out crimes that he says he saw happen in real time. Quote, I witnessed the acquisition, use, and distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms. I witnessed Mr. Combs display and distribute unregistered illegal firearms. I witnessed Mr. Combs provide laced alcoholic beverages to minors and sex workers at his homes Bro, in California, New York, the Virgin Islands, and Florida. I witnessed Mr. Combs' chief of staff, Christina Corum, instruct the staff to retrieve drugs so she could provide them to Mr. Combs for his consumption. And then Jones also talks about that alleged assault that he witnessed on Combs' chartered yacht. You remember when we covered this, that Jones' attorneys had filed a separate civil action against Combs' son, Christian King Combs, on behalf of a woman named Grace O'Markey. She was a steward on the yacht. Remember, and Combs had chartered that yacht for the Christmas holiday in 2022. So according to the declaration, Jones, quote, witness Christian Combs, drug and sexually assault a stewardess while we were on the yacht. Mr. Combs rented in St. Bartholomew, St. Martin, and the Virgin Islands. The assault began in the makeshift studio on the yacht while I was recording Christian Combs' auto-tunes rapping. 
Again, we talk more in depth about that lawsuit in another sidebar episode. Amarki claims that Christian gave her a spike, a spike drink, touched her all over her body without her permission, and tried to force her all to over. perform oral sex on him. And she had to actually fight him off. Now, the next part of this declaration from Mr. Jones is absolutely fascinating. It reads, quote, I have videos of Mr. Combs and me working out on the treadmill with T.D. Jakes playing on the monitor. We watch T.D. Jakes' sermons every morning during our workouts. At first, I thought it was admirable that Mr. Combs listened to sermons while working out until I realized he was not studying the message, he was studying the messenger's mannerisms. During our gym sessions, he detailed how he planned to leverage his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes to soften the impact on his public image of Cassie Ventura's pending lawsuit. Remember, Ooh. Ventura had filed a lawsuit against Combs back in 2020. That's a little interesting because after the first round of uh, violence came out and uh, T.D. Jake's name came up as far as parties or whatever, everybody was on him with the uh, <laughs> hitting him with the cheek clapping. But according to this right here, it looked like old Puff Daddy was actually trying to um, use him to hedge the uh, reputational hit he was going to get off of the uh, Cassie scandal stuff. That's interesting. Three for sexual assault and sex trafficking, but she ended up settling with Combs the day after it was filed. So Jones also goes into detail about what he said happened at this so-called writer's camp at Chalice Recording Studios. You may recall that in his lawsuit, he claims he witnessed a shooting there and that Combs allegedly tried to cover up his involvement. He writes, quote, Mr. Combs converted the parking lot of Chalice Recording Studios into a makeshift nightclub. He had everything imaginable there, including a full-service bar, a massage spa, and hookah. Mr. Combs required everyone working on the Love Album to take laced shots of De Leon tequila. Yo. There was no way to tell him no. Mr. Combs felt anyone who refused to drink with him was suspicious and untrustworthy. At the time, I did not... Hold on. The dude lacing everybody drinks is like you you the one that's suspicious and untrustworthy if you don't drink drink, bitch. Okay, my bad. Realize that he used the lace shots of alcohol to obtain and maintain control over the person consuming the alcohol. And of course, the lawsuits against Combs have accused him of sex trafficking, and that is allegedly what the Homeland Security investigation into him is tied to, a trafficking operation. Remember. His uh, properties in L.A. and Miami were raided by Homeland Security agents two weeks ago. Jones continues in the declaration with, quote, Throughout the duration of my time living with Mr. Combs, I personally witnessed Mr. Combs order his staff to bring him drugs and sex workers. This was a common occurrence, and Very he was so never long. told no. During this time, I was forced to solicit sex workers and perform sex acts to the pleasure of Mr. Combs. Wait, what? I had to perform for the pleasure of Mr. Combs. Come on, yo. All right. Hey, yo, yo, Mr. finish me. reading. Mr. Combs had hidden cameras and audio devices in all of the rooms of his homes. I only discovered this several months into living with him when I had to pick up my Uber Eats delivery from the security office. Usually, the security would bring my food deliveries to me whenever I was in Mr. Combs' home. But at this point, I was close and familiar with the security, so they called me to their room and told me I could go in and retrieve my food myself. Right. I saw four to six large flat screen television monitors at the time. Each monitor had at least 20 to 30 little screens in them. Each screen was a view of a room in and surrounding Mr. Combs' home. Remember, Jones claims that he was sex trafficked, and if there is videos of this, and that's presented at a trial, that is significant evidence, to say the least. Now, Jones even listed out the document dates when he says he was forced to solicit sex workers for Combs. Okay, when? He also names a celebrity that we, we go. haven't really referenced yet. Chris Brown. Easy. Yeah, On July Flex. 2nd, 2023, Mr. Combs had a listening party in his California home. There were a lot of people present at this party, including Chris Brown, Justin Combs, sex workers, and some <laughs> underage girls. Justin. Yo. I definitely must live under a rock because I had no idea there were so many damn sex workers. Where are they finding all of these sex workers? Every other sentence says sex worker. Like, damn. Okay. Oh, yeah. Back to Breezy. Combs would typically bring the younger women to these parties. I have two videos of two different sex workers that Justin Combs brought with him to Chalice Recording Studios. I can provide the videos to the court. 
This event began at 7 p.m. Mr. Combs requested female sex workers and required me to solicit them. Sex An workers. hour later, several sex workers appeared. In addition to sex workers, there were at least five women in the crowd who appeared to be under the age of 16. Uh, Mr. Combs sorry. forced all the attendees to drink laced De Leon liquor. I believe <laughs> Mr. Combs laced the liquor with ecstasy. Yo. I have personally witnessed his staff members, Brendan Paul and... Bring it at LL, that lace liquor. Alcohol with ecstasy. And we remember Brendan Paul was actually arrested. I do remember on that. drug charges during the raid on Diddy's properties. Yeah, he got, he got arrested at the airport, actually. But Jones continues, quote, The presence of what I perceived to be underage women made me very uncomfortable. I attempted to leave, and Mr. Combs forced me to stay. I had my car keys in my book bag. I have never lost my keys, and Mr. Combs went so far as to take my car keys to prevent me from leaving. After being forced to drink laced De Leon shots, I began feeling lightheaded and I passed out. I remember Lace waking liquor. up at 4 a.m. the following morning naked with a sex worker sleeping next to me. In his complaint, Jones had previously mentioned a similar event and describes it in this declaration as well, writing, quote, On February 2nd, 2023, I believe Mr. Combs drugged me. I remember waking up naked, dizzy, and confused. I was in bed with two sex workers and oh, snap, Mr. Holmes. Dude. Oh, snap. Hold on. 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 Did he say and Mr. Combs? Worker sleeping next to me. In his complaint, Jones had previously mentioned a similar event and describes it in this declaration as well, writing, quote, on February 2nd, 2023, I believe Mr. Combs drugged me. I remember waking up <laughs> naked, dizzy, and confused. I was in bed with two sex workers and Mr. Combs. I also recall aimlessly wandering around the house with no clothes on. I have photos of the sex workers sleeping on the bed the morning after. I can provide it to the court if necessary. Oh. And from there, Jones explains in this declaration some of the things he says that Combs offered him, which is important in a sex trafficking case, mm -hmm. that you were transported over state lines, value. forced to perform sex acts, and were promised something of value. That's the commercial element of commercial sex acts. Quote, Mr. Combs promised me many things to entice me to continue engaging in his sex trafficking operation. On multiple occasions, we discussed winning Grammys for the Love Album. He promised I would win the Grammy for Producer of the Year for the Love Album. He offered me $250,000 to purchase all the instruments I wanted. He promised me ownership of his $20 million property, One Star Island in Miami, Florida. He promised to give me access to record label executives. And from there, Jones gives more details about an alleged assault that happened in Miami. He says that while using the restroom, young Miami's cousin first... We know you're hovering mm -hmm. over that button, but we need your help. No, we have a better we button. We promise. No, 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 no. Right on. Into Thank the bathroom you. And began groping him. Quote, I honestly <laughs> believe that Mr. Combs sent her in there to sexually assault me as I could hear him and the other guests laughing outside the door. As she entered the bathroom, she dropped to her knees and began performing oral sex on my exposed penis. <laughs> I pushed her away and exited the bathroom. Young Miami's cousin did not accept my rejection and followed me out of the bathroom. She started undressing in front that. of everyone and attempted to straddle me and have sex with me in the presence of Mr. Combs and his staff. They were all laughing. We're all gonna laugh at you. also talked about Combs' sometimes violent personality. Quote, Mr. Combs often switched his approach to force me to obey and comply with his demands. On multiple occasions, he would threaten me with physical harm. Mr. Combs threatened to eat my face and inform me that he was Wait willing to kill his mother to get what he hold wanted. On, hold, so on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's... Do you see what man threatened to eat his face? Hold on. Multiple occasions, he would threaten me with physical harm. Mr. Combs threatened to eat my face and inform me that he was willing to kill his mother to get what he wanted so he wouldn't think twice about nom, nom, harming me. Nom, that is nom, something nom. we heard in the prior complaint as well. <laughs> Quote, Mr. Combs would also make me work out of this bedroom whenever he had gang members and drug dealers visit him. I have witnessed Mr. Combs hand out guns from the hidden room in his bedroom closet. I have witnessed known gang members at his home in L.A. and Miami be paid from the stacks of cash he has in the head right, room in his bedroom. Too much Jones now, says that Holmes was very aware of the power snitching. he had and made sure that everyone around him knew it too. Quote, throughout my time living with Mr. Combs, he made it very clear that he did not spend his money on anything. He made it clear that he had partnerships and relationships with very powerful individuals and organizations, and these individuals and organizations funded his lifestyle. 
And then the declaration from Jones also rebuts claims by Universal Music Group, a defendant in his lawsuit. Jones writes, quote, My counsel informed me that UMG claims that they did not pay for sex workers or sponsored any of the club love parties or the writer's camp. These claims are contradicted by the reality I saw with my own eyes. There were employees of UMG and Motown present at the writer's camp, at listening parties and after parties. I was told by Mr. Combs they were there and I saw them there. Mr. Combs told me they were scouting for talent. As it pertains to the sex workers, they also paid for them. I have several videos of the Chalice recording studio sessions, as well as in-home recording sessions, and there are sex workers and producers in the studio. The sex workers in these videos were the only individuals paid. So again, this is his account, right? If he backs it up by receipts, photos, screenshots, it's important. It's important. And these are very, very serious claims, but... And now he's doubling down on this court filing, saying that in this unsworn declaration that he can prove it. Now, I will tell you that Jones, he also provides multiple photos in the lawsuit of men and women inside a recording studio. Jones claims that the women in these photos are sex workers. And the declaration goes on to talk about the bragging that Combs allegedly did to Jones, that he lists out several stories Combs allegedly told him, quote, Mr. Combs bragged about having Daphne Joy, the child mother of oh, a competing rapper, on payroll 50, as one of his sex 50. workers. I have a video of Mr. Combs on a massage table receiving a massage from a professional masseuse while Daphne Joy is giving him a foot massage. Mr. Oh. Combs bragged about shooting a woman in the face in 1999 in New York City <clears throat> and getting away with it. He bragged about departed attorney Johnny Cochran's savvy legal skills and ability to pay off the witnesses through private investigators and other third parties. He bragged about having Jennifer Lopez carrying his gun into the club the night of the shooting and the fact that he had so much power and influence over her at the time. He bragged about getting Shine to take the heat for the shooting and the fact that he paid Shine through a record deal with his good friend L.A. Reid. And it doesn't end there because he also says that, quote, Mr. Combs also informed me that only poor people pay taxes. He shared that it is a common practice in the music industry to wire money from anonymous accounts overseas. This way, if there is ever a need to take care of a problem, it would never be traced back to him. These accounts were in Germany. At the very end of the document, Jones says, quote, I could share other things, but I do not feel comfortable putting them in this document. Bro. I I will be willing to discuss them with the court under seal to preserve my Fifth Amendment rights. Now, a lot to take in there. This just doubles down my belief that he is a cooperating witness with the government in this potential criminal investigation. I have to believe it. And if he is one of the witnesses that's cooperating and federal authorities raided these properties, they have to be taking what he's saying is true. And maybe they're corroborating Mm. what he is saying through evidence that was seized from uh, Combs properties. Okay, so a lot to take in, but. We also want to tell you quickly about a new letter that Jones' attorney filed with the court after accusations that this attorney was being too salacious with his court filings. I'm talking about Tyrone Blackburn. He's one of the lawyers representing Rodney Jones and Grace O'Markey in their lawsuits against Sean Combs, Christian Combs, and others. United States District Court Judge for the Southern District of New York, Denise Cote, submitted a referral to the New York Federal Court Grievance Committee claiming that Issues with Blackburn in five cases, she wrote, quote, significant resources have been spent by judges of the court and defendants named in actions he has filed to address glaring deficiencies in his filings. A referral to this court's grievance committee is warranted. She goes on to write, a reasonable inference from Blackburn's pattern of behavior is that he improperly files cases in federal court to garner media attention, embarrass defendants with salacious allegations, and pressure defendants to settle quickly. Indeed, his submissions... Yo, that Cassie thing settled in 24 hours, so... ...to this court have been rife with disturbing allegations against the defendants and defense counsel. Now, other lawyers have also criticized Mr. Blackburn as well. Mm. Combs attorney Sean Holly alleged that Blackburn ignored exonerating evidence, writing, quote, Our attempts to share this proof with Mr. Jones' attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, have been ignored as Mr. Blackburn refuses to return our calls. We will address these outlandish allegations in court and take all appropriate action against those who make them. Then, attorneys for UMG, Universal Music Group, one of the defendants who are also being sued by Rodney Jones for their alleged participation and facilitation of the abuse and trafficking claimed by Jones, they argued, UMG, that the claims 
presented by Jones were, quote, so offensively false. One of those lawyers, Donald Sakarin, said, quote, a license to practice law is a privilege. Mr. Blackburn, plaintiff's lawyer, has misused that license to self-promote, gratuitously, falsely, and recklessly accusing the UMG defendants of criminal behavior. Well, Mr. Blackburn is firing back. He is not taking that lying down. No, he wrote a letter to Judge J. Paul Oaken, a judge for the Southern District of New York, where Jones' lawsuit against Combs is currently filed. And he begins by saying, quote, at the onset, I apologize for wasting the court's time by having to read a letter that has nothing to do with the matters before your honor. He goes on to say that the defendants have, quote, decided to scrummage through PACER, that by the way is the online court record, in search of anything to distract and deflect from the blatant. Yo, he talked too much. He's in the building. What are you doing up, Nate? You up here at Night Island on the East Coast. What is happening with you? Rejected. <laughs> the obvious fact that they cannot defend their actions as it relates to their business partnership with Sean Combs. Mm. He continued, quote, I do not improperly file cases in federal court to garner media attention, embarrass defendants with salacious allegations, and pressure defendants to settle quickly. I gain no benefit from filing cases in federal court over state court, and I am not an ambulance chasing attorney who lives in front of a camera. Right. Before filing any case, I always provide an opportunity for private resolution. If this case cannot if any of you guys saw the last live, um, Ebony K. Williams was talking about that. And she was saying before any of these cases ever reach court, that both sides of councils are communicating with each other, trying to have some kind of resolution before it even happens. So this is lining up with that. I'll be resolved privately. Then I file. I do not pursue media attention. With this case alone, I have been inundated with invitations to appear on television shows, podcasts, and radio shows, both mm. nationally and internationally, and I have rejected them all. Yeah, but then he talk says about this, it, I could. bold and underlined, quote, although I pick my clients, I do not pick their facts. If a client comes to me with a complaint of sexual assault and she or he has evidence to support their claims, it is my duty to include all materials relied upon in drafting the complaint into the pleading. And then he cites some case law to support that. But remember, one of the things that we called out in the complaint is how there were these screenshots of videos, photos, copies of texts, receipts for trips, and so forth. Blackburn goes on to end the letter with, quote, Finally, a referral is not a sanction. My pleadings in this district have consistently comported with the standard established pursuant to Rule 8 of the FRCP and the standard established by the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. If defendants are concerned about having a salacious claim filed against them, they should not engage in salacious acts. Mm. It was the defendant's choice to enter a general business partnership with Sean Combs, which funded his sex trafficking operation. Now, while neither Combs nor his sons have been arrested or criminally charged with no. respect to this investigation, many analysts that we have spoken to believe it is only a matter of time before that. Mm. Spring is nope, nope, here, nope, nope. and people have no a lot commercial. of questions about lawn care. There's Skip one it. simple answer. That happens. Okay. Skip we have this lawsuit from Grace Markey. And <laughs> before we even get into the details of it, there is a question now of what is happening with this. Why do I say that? Because the filing was not on the court system's docket. According to the Washington Post, O'Markey's attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, said that it had to be taken down after an unfiled version of the complaint was published by the media. So I don't know what to take away from that. Who if that it? means that what we reviewed last week wasn't supposed to be seen, not sure. But assuming this lawsuit does move forward, there is a lot to break down in it. Okay, first off, I have to say... Now that I have the paperwork in my hand and I have the complaint in my hand, one of the things that struck me right from the beginning is how personal this is. Quote, defendant C. Combs, that's Christian, Christian. Combs, is a 25-year-old auto-tuned and heavily edited rapper. Wow. Unfortunately, as the saying has it, the apple does not fall far from the tree. Defendant Sean Combs, who has also been accused of several acts of sexual assault, rape, sexual violence, and drugging, among other deplorable conduct, is the father of Defendant C. Combs, who has seemingly taken after his father and the family business of reckless partying, drugging others, sexual violence, Dragon. and other illegal conduct. That, I mean, you usually don't see that kind of language in a lawsuit. Very, very personal, personal. attacks. Also, allegations at this point <laughs> remember Combs has not been criminally charged he's not been found liable 
These are allegations. But Ooh. when they mention Christian, I, I have to highlight this too. They actually embed into the complaint, not a photo of him on the red carpet, not a photo of him on an album cover, not a photo of him taken by the media. They embed a photo of him and his brother <laughs> being detained in handcuffs oh, by man. federal agents during that raid. That is very intentional. Yeah. Of all the photos to use, you are yeah. accusing him of sexual assault and you use that photo? Yeah. That was no mistake. Yeah. Now, I am reminded by the fact that Miss O'Markey is being represented by not only Rodney Diggs, but as I mentioned, Tyrone Blackburn. Mr. Blackburn is representing former Diddy producer Rodney Jones, who also filed a separate lawsuit against Diddy, his son Justin, and several others. He claims that he was a victim of sex trafficking and that he was assaulted and subjected to violence. So maybe it is not surprising we are seeing this language as he He's is so representing personal. multiple people accusing the Combs family of illegal conduct. We're going to get back into the merits of these lawsuits in a minute. But going back to the Omarkey complaint, Another interesting tidbit is that in addition to Diddy and Christian, there are several unnamed John Doe's and companies who are named as defendants as well. Omarkey claims that these people Ooh. and companies aided and abetted in the commission of the conduct described in the lawsuit. Who is it? And that as the case proceeds, she may add their names later on. Now, Omarkey goes into some detail about what this environment on the yacht was like. She talked about how she worked the late night shift from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Quote, during the second week of the charter service, there was a significant amount of partying and drug use, which caused the guests to stay up throughout the night. The makeup of the yacht quickly evolved from just defendant S. Combs and his family to include a constant rotation of suspected sex workers and other A-list celebrities such as French Montana and actor Cuba Gooding Jr. What you twerking with? S. Combs turned what was sold as a wholesome family excursion into a hedonistic environment. Hedons. According to plaintiff, it resulted in an unexpected increase in workload for her and her colleagues, as well as unwanted exposure to unlawful Montana. drug use, sex work, and general chaos. Chaos. She also claims that drinks were spiked by Combs and Lacey. that women Mo were Lacey taken Lickle. advantage of on the yacht. And she argues that as a bartender, she understands the impact of alcohol. And she, quote, found it very suspicious that after one shot of De Leon tequila De Leon. or one mixed drink, various women on the yacht would be falling over themselves, panicking or passing out. This led plaintiff, Ray Somarki, to reasonably believe that the alcohol given to these women was likely laced with drugs. And she even describes one specific event in particular. Quote, according to plaintiff, in another incident, defendant S. Combs had several women whom plaintiff suspected of being sex, work sex workers on the yacht. Or sex in workers. one incident, a girl was extremely upset and ran to the lower deck, locked herself in the massage room, and was hysterically crying. She said she did not feel safe and wanted to leave. The crew was alerted of this. At this time, Sarah Chapman, one of S. Combs's children's mother, was due to have a massage. So plaintiff had to attempt to remove this young woman from the massage room, but she was very reluctant as she felt unsafe. Eventually, she left. All of this is important for Omarki's legal claims, namely that Sean Combs is liable for what his son Christian allegedly did to her. Why? Under the premises liability cause of action, and that, by the way, is where a property owner or someone who is in control of a property has a duty to use reasonable care to keep visitors of the property safe. According to Omarki, since Sean Combs leased, occupied, and or controlled the yacht mm. and allowed who was on it and what was happening... This is his fault that she was sexually assaulted by his son. Quote, defendant S. Combs allowed and encouraged the people aboard his yacht, including his son C. Combs, to engage in the drugs and reckless behavior while aboard the yacht. Defendant S. Combs' negligence was a substantial factor in causing plaintiff's harm because of failing to properly use and secure the yacht and for fostering an environment for drug use and assault to occur without ramifications. So in the law... You need to show causation for this. But for what Combs did, this would not have occurred. We really have to show that you created a condition where it was foreseeable oh, this, this would happen. That Combs knew or should have known this assault would happen because of the environment he created. You might be saying, okay, that seems like a strong claim. Maybe it doesn't. But then you have the aiding and abetting claim against Sean Combs too. Quote, 
Defendant S. Combs knew that an assault, battery, sexual assault was being committed and was and going to be committed against plaintiff because he encouraged and fostered an environment and culture to his son and his employees to do whatever they want with plaintiff and the other yacht staff. And O'Markey goes on to describe how Combs covered up the assault too, that he paid off the yacht captain to keep quiet, allegedly gave him a big tip. By the way, talking about that captain, O'Markey says that after she told the yacht captain, Pitar Milkov, about what happened to her, he, quote, berated her, lacked compassion or concern, failed to investigate, and insisted that she was probably voluntarily partying with the guest. She was not. She also says that, quote, Captain Milkov added insult to injury by assigning plaintiff to work in front of the house, which required personally serving defendant C. Combs while they were on the yacht. Now imagine for a moment that she really is a victim of Christian Combs. That is really sinister stuff. But now let's go back to when Christian Combs allegedly drugged and assaulted Omarki. Remember, these are allegations at this point. I, and I explained a little bit of the background about the this drugging. in the previous sidebar. But one interesting detail from the complaint that we didn't bring up is that according to Omarki, when an allegedly heavily intoxicated Christian Combs came aboard the yacht on that night, and went into the recording studio and started ordering tequila shots, Omarki claims that Cassandra Ventura, or Cassie's... So, I've been making an extra five. Oh, y'all got a, a lot of just ass, for this boy. Y'all raking it in. Skill. Skill. Me and you, that song, was Give playing in the background. Skill. What makes that, as Omarki says in the lawsuit, ironic, is that Cassie was a former artist and girlfriend of Sean Combs mm -hmm. who filed we that initial that. lawsuit against him back in 2023, claiming <laughs> that she was physically and sexually abused by the rapper and producer. She ended up settling with him, but Europeans remember, that was the earlier, first lawsuit uh, the show, that began all of this. From there, we saw more Parliament. lawsuits against Combs. We saw the raids. Now, that is a very <laughs> specific detail for Omarki to remember that... He talked too much, saying the boat captain look, uh, sounds like he was Eastern European. Damn. <laughs> Arguably adds to her narrative, right? And kind of adds a weird context to it. But I imagine that if she were to testify at trial about hearing this song against so how specific, convenient. that would be challenged by Combs's lawyers. And they would say, you remember that? Is that awfully convenient? You remember that detail? Maybe you don't remember other things. So I guess uh, that could be something that she would, uh, or, or something that, that would be challenged. Okay, but now going back to this event. Omarki claims that initially she was forced to take tequila shots, that she Lace, wasn't allowed to leave. She claims that her drink was spiked, and she said that she was very scared and in a very dangerous situation with Christian Combs. Now, I'm not sure if this is a typo, but in the actual suit, it says that Sean Combs touched her legs, her breasts, her private areas and started kissing her on her neck, face, and hands. I'm pretty sure that's a typo mm. uh, because it seems like she has been alleging that it was Christian Especially. who sexually assaulted her. She doesn't sue Sean Combs for assault or battery. So, again, I think this is a typo. And if it is, that doesn't look good. Yeah, I gotta clean this is that up. arguably one of the most important lines in this lawsuit. I'll clean that up, little you mess up attorney. who you're talking about. But, I mean, I don't know what to make of it. But here is what we do have. Omarkey claims that Rodney Jones, as I mentioned, Diddy's former producer, now plaintiff, suing Combs for sexual assault in a separate lawsuit, that he was there on the yacht that night and actually recorded the audio of okay. this, assault, all, this whole episode All right, because it was she hearsay. You got audio? Of what she says is Christian Combs drugging and sexually assaulting her. I'm going to read it for you now. Please. Christian, Yo, it's shot o'clock. Shot o'clock. No, I'm not doing I'll shots, drink Christian. To that. Christian, everybody, we got to take a shot. In a second audio tape, Grace says, I'll just put the ledge. Christian, no, 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 take the whole thing. Grace, no, you will take it as well. Christian, take the whole shot. Grace, I'm only doing it as long as you take it as well. Mm. Christian, I ain't going to lie. I'm not taking nothing. Please, please take the shot. Grace, what? you are drugging me? Christian, take the shot. Hey, yo, play another beat one time because now, then, there is a transcript of yo, Christian's alleged sexual what? assault of Grace. Cassie's me and you playing in the background, allegedly. <laughs> Grace, <laughs> this is not an offer. Christian, you said what? Grace, I can't. I'm swapping out. I can't do it. I'm sorry, swapping darling. Out. Somebody else got to come Christian, take this shit. Nah, y'all wilding. 
Grace, I'm going to stop. Stop. Oh, I have wow, to go. Was... I have to go. Honestly, I'm like already losing sleep. I have to go now. <laughs> Christian, you're the best one on this ship, though. Grace, what do you mean? Christian, who's going to replace you? Grace, who's going to replace me? Christian, F that. That's going to be trash, though. You feel me? Grace, excuse me. You don't touch my legs like that. I'll move my legs where I want to. If I want to do this, then I will. You don't touch my legs like that. Christian, listen, you and everybody in the crew, it's great. Grace, I can't. I have to go down. I have Yo, to go this down. Is audio. Christian, no, I you tell me. Audio. Listen, Grace, what? Christian, like say, Christian, like say you're just vibing with me the whole time. It's Grace, vibing. I can't. I promise you. I wish I could, but I can't. Unless I say that you guys requested me. Christian, yes, who can I talk to right now? Who can I talk to? I'm going to say I requested you right now. Grace, well, you can take your hand off my ass for the first thing. Now, according mm. to Grace in her complaint, or Mr. Markey in her complaint, she basically says she was saying that he needed to get permission, um, and all the people that would give her him permission to hang out with her were asleep, so this was kind of a ruse for her to escape. But moving on from that, as I mentioned in the previous sidebar, she explains how later on in the night, Christian allegedly trapped her in the cinema room in the yacht, groped her and tried to force her to perform oral sex on him. She claims that she had to fight him off until her partner on board came by and Christian ran away. But now in this lawsuit, in this complaint, there are embedded photos of Omarki's arm that appear to have bruises or discoloration. I know, but she claims how we know that this from? is from the attack. It is an important piece of evidence. How do we know? Defense lawyers will ask, when were these photos taken? How do we know if it was caused by this and not something else and so forth? The bag of oranges. Now, moving on. A big yo, 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 this is, they done got into some serious weeds with this. I mean, I want to hear the actual audio that he was reading, that he was reading the transcript from, man. Like this, one of the main things that, that, that one of the main takeaways was that this dude was saying that most professionals are thinking it's only a matter of time before official charges get um get brought about to Combs and possibly one or both or, or both sons. Once that happens, it's gonna be a frenzy. And um the fact that this little ride character went back and filed new court documents after he filed the first one and, and everybody was Question is his um, credibility and being like, yo, I'll testify. I got photos. I got tapes. I got audio. We're going to see what happens. We're going to see what happens. Yo, so um, I'm definitely a poor person because I had to pay my taxes yesterday. As y'all saw in the transcript, Diddy say all the poor people pay taxes. So I'm definitely one of those people, meaning I got a day job I got to go to tomorrow i appreciate y'all <laughs> hanging out oh he talked too much said it shot a clock <laughs> at the bachelor party yo man y'all be easy man all of y'all night owls that's up man i hope y'all have a good night i hope you have a happy hump day tomorrow man we halfway through the week i'll see y'all again on thursday night slash friday morning at 12 a.m um, until next time, you guys, peace and stay informed. I appreciate y'all hanging out with me. Later.